Auzubillahiminashaitwanirrajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are talking about general features of producing these general purpose financial statements. It's an offsetting assets and liabilities, income and expense cannot be offset. You cannot simply say it's an asset and liability, just put, ignore it, offset it. For example, you cannot offset a receivable and payable because assets, receivable and payable liabilities, so just offset them, no. But in case one party is buying goods from them, from you, and you are also buying something from them, let's say you selling 100 rupees and you are buying for 80 rupees. So in this case, offset is allowed because it's the same party. One is asset, the other one is liability. Here you can offset, but otherwise you cannot offset any item of assets, liability, income or expense. But there are, uh, there, there is something if you can see that there is impossible to offset all or any of these items. Next is comparative information. Information relating to the previous period should be disclosed along with the current period. Now, normally we produce comparative statement in the sense that we can match the trend, how the things are going. Now, what we need to look into this comparative basically, that if there is a change, major change in some items, then the question arises where we are, how this change has occurred. Normally, if you are auditors, when they come, they always look into the previous one and the current one. And they earmark okay, where a huge change. What they do normally, ask them to bring all the vouchers so that they can check why there is a big change. So, Comparative is important and the other thing is comparative in the sense that the, what policies you followed previously, the same policies should be followed subsequently. Comparative means if you are producing the accounts in, in, the, in the light of income, international accounting standards, so we need to compare sometime with some other company. So they are also supposed to be follow this standard. For example, in textile, weaving. Weaving, weaving companies, two weaving companies. So let's see how A weaving company and B weaving company producing their account. Let's say if there is a 50% gross profit margin in one and the other one is showing 30% gross margin, it means something wrong. So we need a comparison. Then frequency of reporting. Usually one year time is reporting period, usually. But for management purposes, sometimes we produce monthly accounts. And our law require, SCCP require quarterly accounts. That you need to produce each quarter accounts and only the fourth quarter accounts can be put together, you need three plus fourth combined. But otherwise, you are supposed to produce each quarter reports. Why it is so? Because people want to see in three months' time what progress you made. And another th three months' time what progress you made. So if you produce, let's say, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter reports. So similarly, when you add on fourth quarter into it, so it should not be a big change. Not much change. In fact, we call it big bar. What we do normally, at the fourth quarter end, we try to manipulate things. We want to show something, so we do it in the, because you have already produced three quarters and you have published. It's not that they are not in the market. They have been published. So in the fourth quarter, when you are adding up, so if there is a change, big change in the fourth quarter statements, then people want to see it. Now, consistency. Financial statements shall be prepared or presented in the same way as previous period. 
classification of expenses, assets, liabilities, and accounting policies. In fact, we are supposed to classifying for the for the uh, for the sake of let's say expenses, if you say so. Now, what should be included in let's say selling and distribution expense? The same same expenses should be added together. It's not important that you take it from the selling and distribution and add it to the administrative. No, administrative expense schedules are there. So you must keep that in mind that all those things should be in the administrative. So what we do sometimes, we try to change here and there which is wrong, which is not allowable actually. So we should keep the same classification. Now, similarly, if there are some accounting policies, again, we should follow the same accounting policies year by year, whether it is charging of depreciation or whether it is valuation of stock. You know, people do something about stocks. Regarding stock, what they do? They normally manipulate stock because stock affects directly on your balance sheet as well as on your profit. Because closing stock, you reduce it from the cost and add it to the current asset. So usually people do that. So it's, it's, it's not fair that you play with the, uh, your stock figure because ultimately it reverses. Because closing stock, if you change today, it is going to become the opening stock of tomorrow. So again, you are making something, let's say, beneficial for today. It is the expense of tomorrow. So consistency is also very, very important. Whatever policies, whatever classification we make, we should keep following the same classification again every year. Huh? In case you feel that we made a mistake while selecting the policy, and now we realize that we need to change the policy. You can change it onward. You can change it, not backward, onward. But you need to give an explanation that you want to change the policy because this will give you a better picture now, a fairer picture of the our statements. So only, only in that case it is allowed to change. Otherwise, you are not supposed to change your accounting policies. You are not supposed to change your classification of assets, liability and expenses too. Thank you very much.